Hey y'all, it's Heel Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're going to re review Joey Janela's LA Confidential brought to us by GCW Game Changer Wrestling. Now, I want to preface this by saying there had to be a lot of changes. First off, Joey Janela was taken off the card. Joey Ryan was taken off the card. Amazing Red missed a flight and got taken off the card. So there was a lot of shuffling. So some of the issues that you're going to hear me bring up in this, I attest to that. But let's jump right into it. First up, first match of the night, we had a reshuffling. We have DJ Z versus the great Sasuke. Now Sasuke was originally supposed to put for, uh, wrestle the Amazing Red, Unfortunately, like I said, a raising red couldn't make the flight, so DJ Z, Z had to take his place, thus shuffling a little bit. And I think this may have worked out in our advantage. We had a couple little bit of goofy, gimmicky spots in there where they both called to the DJ. But overall, I thought this was a really good match, a really good opener. I think DJ Z and Great Sasuke, both really good wrestlers. Uh, Sasuke, real innovator of the junior heavyweight style in Japan, and he still pretty, pretty much can do everything he could do back then. I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was a fun way to start the show. Sasuke picks up the win, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and I know, but I've always pronounced it that way. I think when I first heard it on either an old FMW VHS, yes, I'm that old, or on ECW, that that's how they pronounced it, so I've always pronounced it that way. But anyway, I digress. Sasuke picks up the win. Uh, we grade everything, this is my first video you're watching, we grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. I'm going to give this match a 4, but it was a nice, fun opener, got you into the card got you excited for what you were going to see. Now next up, we have Tony Deppin versus Jungle Boy. And I really was got excited for this match because I've seen some Jungle Boy matches. I've not seen Tony Deppin. I've heard his name and I've seen his name, but I haven't seen any of his matches. But Jungle Boy I have, and he's someone that I think is going to be a really big star, despite the weird name and gimmick. Again, I thought this was a good match. I thought it you know, it was fun. I I do think they they kind of looked a little bit rushed at times. You could tell maybe they didn't know each other so well. <clears throat> but all in all, I thought it was a decent match. Tony Depp picked up the win. I'm going to give this one a three. I thought it was good. Uh, it, following their first match, it was kind of hard to put this on. Maybe they should have reorganized that, those two. But I understand why they put that up first. Because everybody wanted to see who Sasuke was going to wrestle. And if you let the the uh, suspense build, maybe people get get uh, disappointed. Like, I've seen a lot of what was being talked on uh, the little chat on Fight TV. A lot of people were talking about Super Dragon, which obviously didn't happen. So when you mention Super Dragon and then Super Dragon doesn't show up, if you waited to the end of the show for that, people might have been disappointed. But I digress. Coming off of that match, going into our third match of the night, we have Brody King versus Hardcore Holly. Now on the live feed, this is why I'm doing this a day later, on the live feed, we lost the feed during this match. I went back and watched it again afterwards. This is actually a pretty solid match. Um... I think it could have been a little bit more, could have been a little bit more violent, but Hardcore Holly's in his 50s now, so got to give the guy a little bit of a break. He still looks great. He still wrestles really well. I thought this was a good match. 
I think Brody King, much like Jungle Boy, is one of those guys. He's one of those West Coast guys that doesn't get quite the love on the East Coast, but is a really good wrestler and should really have more of a high-profile nationwide than he does. He's someone I really enjoy. Um, Brody King picked up the win, which is the way it probably should be. A guy like Hardcore Holly should be helping out Brody King do, do what he's doing. I'm going to give this match a three. I thought it was good. It served its purpose. I thought it was fun. It was a nice match on the show. Again, I enjoyed it. Next up, we have Penelope Ford versus Human Tornado. Now, it's been a couple of years since I've seen Human Tornado, and I actually thought that he had retired, and I haven't been seeing his name around on shows, so I thought I didn't know that he was still wrestling or he might have came back. But I was kind of excited to see him again because he was someone I always did enjoy. The one thing I took out of this match and out of the whole show, Penelope Ford is a star. She is 100% bona fide a star. She's one of the top women wrestlers in the world. She's one of the top wrestlers in the world. She has the potential to be one of your main people in a... In a in a company, whether it be Game Changer Wrestling, whether it be Ring of Honor, or wherever else she may go, I think Penelope Ford has that it factor, and it really shines through, and the more and more I see her, the more it's so obvious that she's kind of got what Candice LeRae had a few years ago, where everybody knew that Candice LeRae was great, but just didn't have the opportunity yet. And I think Penelope Ford's going to be basically the new version of, of Candice LeRae, and she's amazing. And I know they're totally different wrestlers, and their style and their gimmick is totally different. I just mean in the, the fact that you could count on Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae had that it factor, and Penelope Ford does as well. This match I thought was really, really good. I enjoyed this a whole lot. Probably, I want to say this was my my favorite match tonight. There's another match that happens later on that probably is equal to it, but it was one of my two favorite matches either way. And I'll probably go back and forth on those. I give this match a four. Penelope Ford picks up the win. I thought it was really good. Next up, we have Ethan Page versus D'Lo Brown. And wow, D'Lo Locke is out of shape. And I know. I know. I'm commenting on somebody's shape. But D'Lo was never really a bodybuilder type. He looked into becoming into this really heavy, and it slowed him down much. I thought this was a solid match. D'Lo actually... D'Lo doesn't get the respect he deserves. I always thought he was a really solid wrestler, and I don't know why he's never looked at as one of the guys that was a highlight of the Attitude Era. I always thought he was. I enjoyed the whole chest protector thing. I liked him as the European champion. And I always thought he was a guy that kind of like a utility tool where you could put him in with anybody, whether it be the first match or the last match on the night, and he looked like he fit. He can wrestle any style. I thought this was a good match, not a great match. Ethan Page picks up the win by doing what essentially is a old William Regal tactic where he was getting suplexed in from the outside and hit D'Lo with the brass knuckles. However, he shows the ref, so I don't know why he kind of had to hide it. But that's how he picks up the win. I'm going to give this match a three. I thought it was good. Again, much like the Tony Deppin vs. Jungle Boy match, it got hurt a little bit by the match that came before it being better. So my enjoyment level wasn't as, as high as it was for that. Now next up, we have a seven-way scramble match. We have Jimmy Lloyd versus Chase Owens versus Delilah Doom versus Jake Atlas versus Kikitaro, versus Facade, versus Takeshi Miramino. And I probably pronounced that wrong, but that's the first time I've ever seen Takeshi Miramino. I actually had to go to Twitter to hear his name because I couldn't hear what they announced him as on the, on the show. And I know most of the guys in this match. I know Jimmy Lloyd, I know Chase Owens, Delilah Doom, who's awesome, another hidden gem. She's someone that's right there bubbling up on on the indies that's going to be someone in the next two, three years that's going to be a real big player. She is getting better every time I see her. In this match, 
unfortunately, a facade. Facade is somebody that uh, I used to get on Direct TV. I forget what channel. I think it was Ohio Sports Channel or some Ohio Sport Channel. They had a Prime Wrestling out of Chicago, and I seen guys like uh, Facade on there. Johnny Gargano used to be on there. Jimmy Jacobs, and I, I the show just kind of I stopped. Record Marion Fontaine was another guy on there that was really good. But I really liked Fasadi. He was one of the standout stars. Him and, of course, Johnny Gargano. But um, I stopped recording it because I used to DVR. It came on at some weird time. But they ran the same show like six or seven weeks in a row. And after like the sixth week, I was like, I'm just going to stop recording this. And I don't know why they did that. It, maybe they just bought time. Maybe the company already had those slots and went out of business. I didn't, I never looked back into it, and I just think of this now because of facade, but anyway, I digress. This match, there was a lot of stumbling, a lot of botches in the match. It wasn't as clean or, or crisp as it should have been. Kiktaro and Chase Owens had some cool interactions in the match. Delilah Doom was at the absolute star of the match, in my opinion. Jimmy Lloyd picked up the win on this one. I'm going to give this match a two. There was a lot of botches. There was a lot of mistiming. A lot of just weirdness. And it just, to me, it was what these matches could be when they're at, at their worst. Just a clusterfuck. Now, I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Penelope Ford and Human Tornado that there was a second match that I really enjoyed in probably consider it equal. And that's KTB versus Jacob Fatu. And yes, of course, Jacob Fatu is part of the whole Samoan dynasty. KTB used to be Kyle the Beast. If you're not familiar, he's shortened it and became more of a serious character. I really like this match. I think Jacob Fatu, and again, I... I don't know what it is with that family, but it seems that they breed nothing but stars. I mean, you look at it, look at the guys. Rikishi, The Rock, uh, The Usos, Samu, uh, Umaga, Roman Reigns. I mean, all the way down the list. The uh, Wild Samoans, of course, Yokozuna. Just that family, something about that family just... Breed stardom, and Jacob Fatu is not, not an exception. He's another one of those people, and he reminded me so much of Umaga, and part of it is he had Umaga's face on his shirt, so that thought was in my brain, but he moved like Umaga, and he wrestled like Umaga, where he was fast, and he was violent, and everything he looked, he hit looked like it hurt, and it looked so realistic, and I don't mean that as a diss, it looked to other wrestlers, it looked so much like he was actually beating KTV up. And when you could take and put someone like me that's been watching wrestling for 35 years crazy, I watch every single day I watch something wrestling, whether it be a full wrestling show or just a few matches, every single day of my life I watch something wrestling related. And to take someone like me and bring them back to where they, their brain shut off, where they're not analyzing the match, knowing that it's a work, and they're looking at the match, like, and pulling me into that, and a lot of matches do that, but he really seemed, it was like, it was like watching Umaga again, it was like watching Brock Lesnar when he first started, or watching Taz when Taz became the human suplex machine. He just had that aura of invincibility, and I really enjoyed that. Jacob Fatu picked up the win here. I'm going to give this match a four. I thought it was really good. I hope to see much, much more of him. Uh, this is my first time actually seeing Jacob Fatu. I was kind of surprised I hadn't seen or heard of him before this, of course, with his family lineage. And I may have, because he may have switched names at some point. But if I did... And he switched names and has a different gimmick. This gimmick's much better suited for him. Now next up, this match was part of the shuffling. I forget who Marco Stunt was initially supposed to wrestle. But Eli Everfly was initially in that seven-person match, which was a six-person match. 
So, we had that <laughs> to go here. And we have Eli Everfly versus Marco Stunt. Now, this match was going good. And then they wrestled out in the crowd. And the cameramen, I believe they had two cameras. They had a hard camera and one person on the floor. And they really couldn't get through the crowd to get where the guys were. So, for the last five minutes of the match, I didn't see what happened. I really can't rate this match. I want to give it a good match rating. I like Eli Everfly. I like Marco Stunt. They're in the crowd, and it kind of got confusing because the match gets stopped, and I guess Eli Everfly wins. But what happened, and I had to watch some... Again, I had to go to Twitter and see what somebody recorded with their phone. Eli Everfly hits a Canadian Destroyer on Marco Stunt on a door, and Marco gets injured. And then it takes him a few minutes to carry Marco out. He was legit injured. And... I really can't rate this match because of half of the match I didn't get to see. Half of the match wasn't recorded. And I don't want to hold that against the two wrestlers. And I can't hold it against the promotion either because of where they were. They were in a bar that was packed. It was slam-packed. It didn't look like there was any room for anybody else to be in that building. So it had to be hard to walk around. So I, I don't want to hold that against either person. I'm not going to rate this match. I'm going to give it an incomplete, basically. I don't want that to sound bad. What I did see, I liked. What I will say that. But I can't really say I enjoyed a match that I missed half of it. Which brings us into the main event of the night. And the reason that probably most people, including myself, purchased this pay-per-view. Nick Gage versus former WCW champion David Arquette in a death match in 2018. And this is really happening. Deputy Dewey in a death match. And David Arquette gets a lot of crap. I'm not a person that gives him a lot of crap for what happened in WCW that I put that more on Vince Russo. Once I found out that he gave all the money he made in WCW to the families of deceased wrestlers, and once I learned that he absolutely did not want to be the champion, that basically they forced it on him, and Diamond Dallas Page co-signed and said, look, just do what they're giving you. And with him coming back this many years later... I can't hold nothing against him. And I actually like Ready Rumble. I know it was crappy and I know whatever. It's a stupid movie, but sometimes I like stupid stuff. So I don't look at David Arquette as negatively as most people. A lot of his matches, uh, a lot of stuff him and RJ City teaming up has been actually rather good lately. And he's in great shape. I was interested to see what David Arquette would do in a death match, especially against a guy like Nick Gage, who's... One of the guys that's most known for the death matches, he's top of the food chain when it comes to deathmatch wrestlers. And this match was brutal. It was violent. Arquette held his own and they there was a lot of stuff in there. There was a lot of chairs, there was a lot of there was light tubes, and we're gonna get to that part if you, you probably already know about the, the part. We get to the end. And uh, Nick Gage is hitting Garquette with a light tube. And he either hits him in the neck. It looks to me like Garquette moved and part of the light tube that's broken off jabs him in the neck. And it looked like it got an artery. Because he started bleeding all over the place. Immediately, David Garquette shoots on Nick Gage, which fucking crazy. Don't, I don't think you want to do that. Nick Gage, he's insane. <laughs> There's no way, no good way to put it. I wouldn't shoot on Nick Gage. Pretty sure he would cave my skull in if I did. But you could see, and I watched the, the replays and different angles that people shot, again, going through Twitter. Nick Gage immediately tries to calm down the situation. But Arquette is bleeding, shooting blood out of his neck. He's holding his hand against it so he doesn't 
basically bleed to death. And it became a really scary situation. At one point he gets up, it looks like he's going to walk out. We get the, where Nick Gage, and again, he hits him in the head with a light tube and picks up the pin. Arquette's notably frustrated. And I don't think he was frustrated with Nick Gage. I think he was frustrated with the fact that the match wasn't able to be finished in the way he would have liked it to be. And we've since since this has come out, we found out that he is fine. And I'm gonna put give you give you a warning. I'm gonna put a picture up right here. If you're squeamish, it's gonna come up in three, two, one. This is a picture of after the match. This is what happened to him. If you see, look at his neck right here. There's a hole in his neck. That's where he got cut. That's right on your artery. Feel your neck exactly where that is. You can feel a vein going there. That's not a good spot to get cut. Until I woke up this morning, because this got over, like, first off, I'm on the East Coast. It started off at 8 p.m. California time, which means it started at 11 p.m. East Coast time. By the time this got over, it was 2 in the morning for me, which I'm not complaining about, but I had to go work. Pretty much went to bed right after this. And I didn't know until I woke up that everything was fine. He was cool. He wrote everything was fine on his Twitter. So, a really, really scary situation. When Nick, I, and if I hadn't mentioned, Nick Gage did pick up the win. Overall, I give the match itself a three. It's crazy to think. And I really thought about this with all the light tubes that have been broken, that there hasn't been a fatality with it. Uh, if you've ever broken a light tube, when I was in school, and this is a little sidebar, we would see when they would throw these out in the trash dumpster, and we'd see them in there, and we'd grab them, and we'd, we'd throw them and break them against the concrete because they would pop and they'd make that exploding sound because the gases are exploding out of it. We always thought that was cool as kids, you know. I mean, we're fourth, fifth grade, or sixth graders. Of course we thought exploding sounds were cool. But when you do that, you see just how sharp, because we'd often go and pick up the glass and throw it away, or, you know, as much as we could. I mean, we were... We tried to be decent about it. So, you would feel how sharp that glass is when it breaks, and it, it's so random that I'm surprised that this hasn't happened more, that more people haven't had their necks cut, especially with all the times we see light tubes hitting against somebody's head. I mean, we've seen big chunks of people get cut out because of light tubes. So, it's surprising that something like this hasn't happened before with that. I digress, so it's weird that David Arquette's the guy that almost died from it. But, that being said, overall, and again, I rate everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best, I give the show a 3. Due to all the problems and the reshuffling, the two injuries on the last two matches... It could have been a lot better. There were some real highlights tonight. The Nick Gage-David Arquette match up until that point I thought was going really well. Uh, KTB versus Jacob Fatu I thought was an awesome match. Penelope Ford, Human Tornado. DJZ versus Great Sasuke. All really good matches. D'Lo Brown, Hardcore Holly putting put in work, helping to put over young guys and Ethan Page and Brody King. There were some real highlights to the show. There were some injuries that caused some lowlights, too. But with all that being said, basically, that's all I have to say on this one. My name is George Coles, and this has been my review of Joey Janela's L.A. Confidential.